Ethan joining us on the show now, a dear friend and uh, the, the the head of Treehouse Comedy Productions for a million and a half yeah, I've, years. I've, I've heard the name. I've heard the name. <laughs> Brad man. Axelrod. Hey, Brad. Hey, Brad. Morning, gentlemen. How are you this morning? We're doing good. Awesome. We, we normally talk to you off the air and book our amazing comedians through you uh, over the years. So many, uh, Gilbert Gottfried and Rich Voss and Nick DiPaolo and all, all the big names we book through Brad and... Uh, it's my understanding that, Brad, you're no longer going to be running Treehouse Comedy Productions. <laughs> uh, well, um, I will still be uh, working with, uh, with the new owners of Treehouse Comedy Productions, but um, I'm not going to be putting in my 50-hour uh, work weeks along with my, uh, with my evenings in the clubs. So you sold the company. Uh, who did you sell it to? Yes, I sold, uh, I sold all the assets. To the company to uh, John Tobin presents, and they operate ten different um, comedy clubs up in Massachusetts, including Roar at the MGM uh, Grand, um, Laugh Boston. Um, they book uh, Nick's Comedy Stop, which has been around for 36 years. So um, they are uh, professionals. Um, they have a passion for the business, like I do. Um, they value the the Treehouse um, brand here in Connecticut. So I'm looking forward to uh, to working with those guys and making it as smooth a transition as possible. Well, congratulations, man! I know how hard you work uh, from working with you over the years. You, um, how many years did you own the company? Like, tell people about a little bit about the company that they might not know. So I started the company uh, 36 years ago. Um, back in 1983, uh, the Treehouse was Connecticut's original um, and first full-time comedy showcase. Um, so it's uh, it's been a long run, and I'm sure that these guys at John Tobin Presents are going to make it a uh, make it a longer one. Awesome stuff, you know. And 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 everybody in Danbury knows the name Treehouse. I mean, oh yeah. You go back so many years, rich history here in Danbury. You know, I got to, I had the great pleasure of doing comedy uh, ex basically exclusively for Brad. I think I only did probably two gigs outside of, uh, outside of Brad. Um, and I remember my first one, terrible, absolutely terrible. I butchered it to awful night. Great. Hilarious. Uh, at the old Sorrento. Remember, remember the that. old Sorrento? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you always had great potential to uh, to do stand up. I mean, it was the the lack of of focus and time and attention that, that didn't permit you to to take it and run. Yeah. But the the funny was always there, and the talents were always there, um, as you prove every morning on the radio. What I mean, some of my, of Ethan. some <laughs> of my uh, we had some fun times. I like telling some some great stories about uh, the times that we had with comedian. One night, <laughs> and you might not even want to comment on this, but. Uh, <laughs> We did a show up at Mohegan Sun, and Michael Winslow, the guy from the Police Academy movies, huge, you know, huge star in the 80s. Right, right. Really funny. There's all the voices and everything. So yeah. uh, he's the headliner. Uh, Brad, you know, was nice enough to let me open this show, this amazing show, uh, you know, at Mohegan Sun. We do the show, and then we go out for drinks. It's me, Brad, Michael Winslow. Okay. Michael Winslow didn't say one word all one night. One word. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdest yeah, guy Did ever. he do any noises? Or, uh, <laughs> no. No, nothing, huh? Weirdest guy yeah, ever. That sucks. Yeah, he was. He's a. He's a strange character. Uh, as many right. as are many in our business, but let's face it. You know the talent um, and the dedication that these guys um, take to the stage night after night is really, you know, truly a testament to to how the Treehouse, thirty six years later, has been able to to provide entertainment in Connecticut. So let me ask you a question. Um, you know, we'll have you on. Uh, does Gilbert Godfrey know we're going to call him? Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he sounds uh, like like he doesn't have any idea that. Uh, yeah. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, he no, he's expecting your call. All right. tomorrow. You 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 booked everybody. Tell some of the people that these are household names. They're everywhere. Some of the highest profile comedians that have come through your rooms that you know. Yeah, we've been lucky. Um, you know, being the first. Back in the 80s, you know, the Jerry Seinfelds and the Jay Leno's and the Rosie O'Donnell's and the, the 90s when we were doing the Chris Rocks and the Jeff Foxworthy's. I remember paying Andrew Dice Clay 300 bucks in, you know, 1983. Wow. That's what he's um, making so. now. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no. no I, much better than that, I can attest. To I know the Dice Man's back. He's back. Yeah, he's doing all right. He's become a uh, uh, an actor as well as a stand-up lately. 
Do you remember when Bobby Slayton told me to get Dom Fig off the stage because he was ready to go on? <laughs> yeah, Bobby gets a little, a little nervous. Yeah, he's wound um, up when somebody is uh, is doing well in front of him. <laughs> You, oh, you weren't there the other night. This other night, it was your daughter and I. We yeah. had to get Nick DiPaolo out of his car. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I had to get, I opened the show. I had to get, or I middled, I don't know what it, what it was, but I had to do my thing, get off the stage, and go out to the car and say, <laughs> okay, yeah. come in now, because as I, as he instructed me to do. Yeah, when I'm not there to, um, to talk with Nick before a show, <laughs> He's a little bit more reclusive. <laughs> so, I guess so. <laughs> hiding in his car is is not unusual if I'm at another gig. <laughs> he's going to be on with you guys. Um, he's playing uh, the Strand Theater in Seymour um, in October. So, you know, he's already uh, promised on coming in studio and hanging with you guys the, the day yeah. of. God, that's great. Awesome. Yeah, it'll be cool. Do you awesome. remember when Gilbert at the Edmond Town Hall in Newtown asked where he right. could get a hooker? <laughs> <laughs> in Newtown? Uh, uh, I don't remember that, but I do remember when Gilbert was playing for me in Danbury. At then was called the Ramada Inn, and Ronnie Spector was at the show, and she got so drunk that she was literally being carried out of the room. Great. And I walked Gilbert up to his room with Ronnie Spector, and I thought was her husband at the time. <laughs> And all three of them piled into the room. I just walked away, just laughing, going, "Oh, good my luck, to everybody!" God, I yeah. could only imagine. Oh boy! So, so you, yeah. you, you, you must have stories for for just days. Is there for one? Days. Is there one that that sticks out to you? Not Oof. not necessarily, you know, when you and I were hanging out, but you know, something that sticks out to you—a big story, big name. Well, I remember when um, Jerry Seinfeld played for me, and he um, got me tickets to see him on Letterman like the next day. And back in those days, you know, the comics would close a Letterman show. So my sister lived in the city at the time. So me like a big shot, you know, invited her to the show. So I met her in the city. We went to the show and you know, there was a huge line of people. And I guess, you know, we were on a list that you didn't have to wait in line. Um, so my, you know, chest as well, I'm showing off to my, to my little sister. We go into the into the um, theater, and they sit us where there's like yellow tape in front of the in front of the chairs. They rip off the tape. We sit down. Jerry does his thing. After the show, I go up to a page with my sister, and I said, "So you know, keep in mind that Jerry just closed the the TV show." I went up to the page and I go, you know, Brad Axelrod from the Treehouse and a friend of uh, of Jerry's, and he said to ask for him um, after the show. So of course I pictured myself um, backstage talking with Jerry and and Letterman and my sister, you know, sitting there mouth agape. And the page comes back 30 seconds later and says, "I'm sorry, Mr. Axelrod, but uh, Mr. Seinfeld has already left the bill." <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. There's no Fantastic. way in hell he could have hightailed it that fast. <laughs> So my shoulders slinked, and I uh, I was very swiftly grounded in front of my little sister. Wow. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. it was a classic. I learned a lot from you. Uh, I appreciate you. You particular in particular made a lot of my dreams come true. Introducing me to all these guys. I think you know Sweet, Eddie Lou. that um, a lot of why I did comedy at all was to get to know these guys and get to be around these guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and you made that dream come true for me, so uh, I appreciate it. Lifetime well, of memories. I, I've appreciated you guys over the years. You've cheated the treehouse and, and me um, with uh, outstretched hands, and you've always, always made me feel warmed and, and welcomed, and I have appreciated uh, the relationship over the years, and I look forward to continuing that in a different capacity and uh i love you guys you always have a place in my heart and and, and i thank you both thank i think you. i'm i think i'm attracted right <laughs> <laughs> I'm and I, re I remember uh, one last thing that when lou joined on here was well, been 13 years now yeah yeah you one of your first items was to get to know these comedians and form a relationship with them so we could have right. them on yeah yeah 
And we've done we we've done that, and we know the the ones that are always going to work. The chemistry exists between yeah. us and Rich Voss and Nick DiPaolo and Gilbert Gottfried and uh, John Romanoff and R.C. Smith and all these names that you get, these guys hear all the time. That all came together uh, because of Brad's help. Thanks, man. We appreciate I appreciate it. it. It's been uh, it's been a mutually uh, beautiful love fest. Okay, let's do a bro <laughs> hug. <okay. laughs> I like that. <laughs> all right, Bradley. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Thanks, fellas. Love See you, you both. Take yeah. care of yourself.